Have you ever wondered how to take a picture like this or a drawing and prepare it for a laser to cut out for wall art for an office or a, a shop or general wall art? Well today I'm going to show you. We're going to be using several different programs. We're going to be using Microsoft Paint and we're also going to be using Vectric Aspire and also the laser program which is LaserCut 6.1. So I'm going to jump now straight into screen capture and uh, we'll prepare this drawing. So the first thing we do we take our Tiger Art and drag and drop it into Microsoft Paint. Now we need to make this a little bigger so we can see what we're dealing with specifically this area and the next thing we need to do is to choose a brush well that one's okay uh, medium line that that's okay as well now we'll go fine line black now the areas of concern are here um, we need to thicken up this because this whole black area here is just hanging on this little bit. So we need to thicken up that. We need to join this to this to brace, you know, both parts up. So we'll start with that first. Let's just left click and draw down. Actually, we can go a little bit thicker than that. Mix one up. Just very carefully. It doesn't matter that it looks a little pixely because in in a spire, uh, you know, a spire will just draw around that and ignore the pixelization, if that's a word. And we'll thicken this up here like this. Um, that's okay. Just to generally have a look around to make sure that you know, no, there's not a, a large piece that's just hanging on by a thread, as it were. Um, I'm going to join this up with this as well. Just make it not so. That will do fine. And really, that's all we need to do with this picture. Just those areas of concern. So now we can save this in a file that Aspire is going to understand. Save as a bitmap picture. And save it to desktop. Uh, tiger. Oh, we're already dealing with a tiger. So we're going to call it Tiger 1. I will say bitmap will probably come up anyway, but. Uh, so we'll just write P B M P. So we can distinguish that's what it is. And press save. So this is the opening screen of Aspire. And we're going to create a new file. Um, and really at this stage the size doesn't really matter because in LaserCut. 6.1 we can alter the size there so 100 by 100 which is roughly four inches by four inches will be fine the depth really doesn't matter um, I like to start with the laser I like to start in this top right hand corner S leave this as standard it's absolutely fine and press OK so now to import our art, we're going to File, and we want to import 
a bitmap from desktop. There it is there. So the process is very, very quick in Aspire. We just go to this symbol here, which is trace a bitmap. Now it just goes grays out so you can see you can just about see the picture and it does a lot of the work for you uh, a lot of it's automatic um, we don't want a color we're dealing with a straight black and white uh, picture um, which is it's already been selected leave this alone this is fine all the settings are absolutely fine now preview and you will see that Aspire has traced exactly what we want for, for the laser and we're going to apply that and we're going to close it and it's really as quick as that and the next thing we're going to do then is select all the vectors um, we'll save this file So now we have all the vectors selected, we are going to export as a DXF file. And that is it. We, we've finished now with this program. Uh, this program, Aspire, is probably the most powerful program of this nature and certainly at the price. Um, although this program Aspire is at the high end of the market um, for hobbyists um, it is the best one available. So we've opened up LaserCut 6.1 and now what we need to do is come here to the import uh, desktop and we just look for a Tiger which is down here somewhere there it is oh well, that's bitmap DXF. Bring it in. So the first thing we need to do is to size this for our material or the job size that we want. So just select it all. Come over till this. You notice the cursor changed from a, a black arrow to a, a white cross. So when that happens you can right click, press size. Now we're going to make sure that the lock scale is on because that locks the aspect ratio so now what we want is 500 press ok nice big tiger deselect then reselect the outside okay when you have the outside selected put it on a different layer can be any color you want but uh, I, I just <laughs> use these sequentially as I need them and you'll notice it is blue <laughs> to indicate the blue so what happens is laser cut will work through the listing up here and it the top one it will do for it, it it will cut first and that's exactly what we want we want all the inside parts cut out first and then this out one, outside one cut out very, very last. So double click on this. And I know from experience with my laser, which is 100 watt, uh, this will do 20. You know, I don't want my machine, thr I don't like my machine thrashing around. So. A nice sedently 20 millimeters which is a, just a little over three quarters of an inch per second of cutting speed um, this needs to be 60 and that's 60 percent of the output and don't forget the output of a laser as this is in percentage doesn't mean it's going to be 60 watts in actual fact that's going to be about 80 watts and I know running speed needs to be about 55, 55, always blowing, 
always have it always have your your laser in blowing mode because what what it does is it not only keeps the lens cool it also keeps it clean and you know the main purpose is to blow the debris and gases away because the debris and gases can actually interfere with the laser beam itself so let's calculate that 20 millimeters a second 60 60 no this means um, when the laser initially fires into the material you need to make sure it punches a hole straight through quickly it makes it easy for the laser then in the corners in sharp corners you uh, basically need a little bit more power as the laser uh, comes to a, a sort of a gradual stop and then restarts up and goes a different direction and it's better to have the corner um, set in um, the same as the you know sort of the initial uh, strike of the laser and running in a straight line or a curve you can come back uh, you know 10% or so I will okay that so that's it we're done all we need to do now is um, set the material up on the laser and set our zero position start of the program which is up here which is indicated by that little blue dot there uh, the red uh, sorry red the yellow squares indicates where the laser will start so although this is the start of the program when I turn the laser on or press the, the um, start of the program on the laser to start cutting it will travel down through to this corner and cut this direction you see there's a little red arrow here too it shows you the direction that it's going to um, move or cut and the same with every individual section so let's go to the laser when you get your material on the bed now in this case it's something I do very rarely is that I'm using the honeycomb uh, in this case uh, this is where the honeycomb is the best type of uh, surface to cut on um, but this is quite thin it's one eighth of an inch uh, ply and sometimes you know if you've got it standing around the workshop oh and it's been here about a week it has started to bow a little um, so it's very important to get it as flat as possible so I use these uh, magnetic bases they're actually you can buy them in the dollar shop these are they come with these little hooky things with a thread on the end and they're for putting on a metal cabinet or something and hanging your coat up on so that, that's what I use and they're, they're, they're fine I, that's what I use all the time so I now have to put quite a few of these on here to keep it flat everywhere else another one here sometimes you have to double up on them but now this is all now flat that's flat there and of course that's important because if it was bowed anywhere the laser goes out of focus so you've got to maintain in my case uh, nine and a half millimeters above the material that's the optimum distance so now we're going to set the zero point or the start of the program and uh, as you've seen uh, in laser cut 6.1 I have made this 500 by 500 near enough nice big um, wall art so that's what we'll do right now, set up the zero. 
So what I was doing then is I was just making sure that I wasn't going to nick this as indeed first off it did uh, because on the back of my nozzle I have a proximity sensor so I was just making sure that wasn't going to get in the way and we can come over this way a little bit further I think that'll do fine so we're going to set that as our datum And we'll just do a run around now, just to make sure everything's going to come into the area that we hope it's going to do. Perfect. So now I'll set the laser going. And um, I'll play you some nice music in the background. Google has uh, sent me some um, pretty good music, actually. So uh, there's some new stuff coming in. So here we go.
the signs of not only a good laser, but of that you have the program and the system and the speed and feed and the power all set right is when you catch hold of your piece and everything pretty well drops out fairly easy like this maybe just push a couple out oh, there we go just a couple of stubborn ones, but they all basically drop out. And of course you can easily make a jigsaw puzzle. So we'll hold this up against something black in a minute. And you can see the importance now of where we've modified the drawing. Um, you know, there would have been, it could have had some breakages because it's very thin in places. And, uh, you know, where, where we've thickened um, things up, it's made all the difference. And, you know, where we've joined up as well, uh, because this would have been a little leg sort of uh, just floating around. Uh, so those are the things that you have to look for. And of course this is, if you go into Google and uh, you, you put into the search for stencils, black and white, um, all these type will, will turn up. Uh, but be prepared to um, look at them closely and modify them to suit the laser. like that video today if you have please press like and subscribe that always helps and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons uh, if you want to become a patron uh, the information or the link to my patron page is down below this video because without the patrons behind this channel well it probably wouldn't exist so once again thank you very much and I hope you pop in and see some of my other videos. There's now 400 videos on over two channels. The, to get to my second channel is quite easy. It's, it's called Roger Webb Channel 2, CNC's and more. Um, so a lot of the earlier uh, videos that I, I did, uh, I've put over onto that second channel. And there's some uh, new stuff on there as well. Um, on a phone, <clears throat> on a phone, just go into the about, uh, scroll down through there, and it's on the bottom section of that. So, thank you very much for watching, and it's bye for now.